Yeah, what's that got us there with you? Eddie's been to Nepal four times now. It's all, all starting to blur. And uh, this is supposed to be for baby boomers who aren't that <laughs> memory efficient anymore. You want a quick overview of Eddie's first four trips to Nepal? And just to get... A, Isn't she amazing? Huh? She knows how to, to really be the story. All right. Another cappuccino, please. Shuffling through my notes. It's a lounge table. <laughs> uh, four previous trips to Kathmandu. All right. He first visited Kathmandu in the spring of 1965 on his first trip to India. Mm -hmm. It was really the culmination of that trip, you know, all through the subcontinent by third-class train. And, uh, alone in a strange land. Uh, yeah, Eddie gets tipped off to Kathmandu. He, he gets up there, and uh, he tracks down the globe freak scene in the Globe Cafe, hashy smoking lounge, mm -hmm. where few foreigners hang out yeah uh, he's delighted to see Susie she he knows her from Copenhagen mm -hmm. and she introduces him to the scene well Eddie here's the scene <laughs> there's four of us in the country now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that smokes and ashes play some guitar can you scat sing a little bit yeah well, Eddie's not used to the cold. <laughs> In the Himalayas, especially up to the human flat lands of India, yeah. he lingers long under the blankets. Yeah, in those chilly mornings. After breakfast in a small chai shop, he goes to the American Embassy to read. Uh, not the Embassy, the American Library. Because uh, it's warm, it's heated. Mm hmm. And then he wanders around the war in the temples. Mm. <laughs> Centuries old. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so, Kathmandu, 1965. Handful of freaks, that's it. Huh? And then from there, Eddie travels 8,000 miles uh, to uh, Europe. And, uh, yeah, he brings Primo Hashish with him to Copenhagen. He's a celebrity there. Oriental Tales, Hashish, Connoisseur. He gets busted. Does three months in jail, deported to England. <laughs> Just before Christmas, freaks him out. Downtown London, cold, rainy. Uh, he gets out of there and heads back to Morocco. Second winter in Morocco. Mm. Gets strung out by a flaky Danish teenager. And amphetamines. We really didn't know the difference in those days. It's like something new to take. Well, what's that about? We were taking like Romular cough medicine from Turkish pharmacy. Ah, oh, yeah. And, you know, painful period of paranoia. He gets his head back together a little bit in Spain, mm -hmm. Portugal. Switzerland, he withdraws his entire divorce settlement, $14,000 from a bank in Zurich. And lives off the interest of that for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. oh. $100 a month. Well, Eddie, he was smitten by India on his first trip. And now he heads back towards India with the intention of living there. He's 42 when he crosses into India for the second time, yeah. Weather too cold for Kathmandu, so he travels south to Goa for the first time. Okay. Alone on the uh, expansive and oh, look at those sand crabs, though. All over the place. And they make these like patterns and trails and then follow down in the holes. 
in the sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, kind native family take them in. You know. Don't even think about rent one way or the other. It wasn't that kind of vibration. Uh, during his initial visit to Goa in Hello, demented hippie historians, 1966. Are we all clear on that? Oh, he never sees another expatriate traveler the whole winter. Okay, 1967. Huh? Reviewing my notes, yeah. Second trip to Nepal. Mm -hmm. He lives in the dormitory on Freak Street. Hangs out in the blue Tibetan. Ram Dass arrives. <laughs> Woo! With Bhagwan Das, his mentor, and whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Eddie declines an invitation to hang out with Ram Dass. Well, I mean, Ram Dass is making a major buzz. Passing out free LSD. Remember to bring your flip-flops so they won't let you into the five-star hotel. Go up to Ram Dass's room. Uh. <laughs> yeah, free LSD. Mm -hmm. Money? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, Eddie has stopped. Uh, okay. Between his first and second trip to Nepal, Eddie stops taking drugs and having... Well, he, except for if the rum is really good, like at Xavier's, yeah. But besides that, and a few beady cigarettes, uh, that's it. Uh, his heart chakra is now fully open. <sighs> Eddie wholeheartedly, you know, I mean, all the way open, okay. Wholeheartedly, uh, welcomes anybody uh, into his uh, shelter. Mm -hmm. And he embraces the uh, disoriented, needy Western travelers who <sighs> increasingly gather around him. Yeah. 1968, third trip to Nepal. Am I doing okay? One, two, three. Third trip to Nepal, 68. He's back in the dormitory. Blue Tibetan. He encounters Ganesh Baba. That Hindu guru freak. Kind of hippie. Phew. Ended up in San Francisco. Uh, he's blown away. Uh, after that, uh, you know, Ganesh Baba. <laughs> Shakti Pod. <laughs> well... Well, okay, yeah, I mean, it's like that. It strikes you like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Shakti Pada. Well, okay. Uh, that's when Eddie experiences the uh, peak mystical experience of his lifetime. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and Eddie never stopped talking about it. You just go into your smartphone. Say Eight Finger Eddie, and you'll get like six video interviews of Eddie. They're three to six minutes. And uh, in every, every one, he talks about this. Uh, even in his last interview before his death. Yeah. Mystical experience, yeah. Well, in 1969, his fourth trip to Nepal. Are you following this? Yes, that's when I for, first offered. Oh, Came on the scene in Kathmandu. Sure. Uh, well, the preferred hippie joint, the Linkasar Smoking Cafe, and uh, uh, that other ho ho hot spot in the cabin. You've heard all about that, yeah. Run by Rana. Just got the finest record player in the ball. And that's where I first witnessed Eddie's uh, uninhibited cosmic. Yeah. Dancing. How was he so free inside? Oh, uh, yeah, I've seen. Oh, uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. All right. R quick recap for the guys and others. Uh, uh, yeah. 
1965, five freaks in Nepal. 1969, fourth trip, Kathmandu, hundreds of freaks in residence. Looking for a high time. Full moon parties on the slopes of Swaimbuna Temple. Unforgettable psychedelic celebrations. Uh, acid everywhere. The scene in Nepal. <laughs> and I jumped right in the middle of it. Seems to be peaking. Eddie is patient with the flip-outs. We're a long way from home. No. Many travelers finally break down because of illness. Unwise drug use. No money left. Visa problems. Uh, relationship messes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, often a macabre blend of these dark energies. And Eddie never manipulates young disoriented hippies for sex or anything. And uh, so they can relax around him. <sighs> Absolutely relaxed around his fatherly uh, energy. Take refuge. Heal.